Hello, this is part one of my 3D printed Ghostbusters Proton Pack build. In this video, I'll be scaling and slicing a 3D model, printing it, and then taking those 3D printed parts and cleaning them up, ready to be reassembled. Right, this is the Proton Pack file, opened in a software called Netfab Basic. Just need to make that the correct scale, because at the moment it's looking a little bit short, coming in at only two and a half centimeters tall. So I'm gonna scale that up. I found some uh, blueprints online that tell me that the height of this should be about 65 centimeters tall. So we're going to make that 650 mill millimeters. There we go. Now we've got the problem of that is much too big to fit on my printer bed, so it needs to be sliced up. I think six inch sections will be the way to go. So if that's about 12 inches across. I'm just going to cut that right down the middle. Cool, let's cut that one. Now this is 65 centimeters tall. That's a little over two foot. So if I cut that into four pieces, then that should be okay. And then one more piece up here, just cut that half down the middle there. And that should give us our six inch sections. Now if I want to cut those down anymore, I can just import each one in individually and do that. I'm now going to export those. So export part, STL. So call that point on pack one. Eight. I'm going to save this. It's proton pack split. Cool. Now let's import one of those parts, number one, into the 3D printing software. Ginormous. Now, which way up do we want it? I think that might be the best way of doing it. Let's move it forward slightly just to keep it clear of those magnets at the back. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think that should print okay. We'll find out. All right, how much plastic is that going to take? And how long is that going to take? I reckon something of that size is going to take absolutely ages. Let's do it. So, raft. We want it on a raft. In case the bottom layer warps and it won't join up to so the next piece, it supports everywhere. Uh, save that onto my memory card. We call it Proton Pack One, and save. How long is that going to take? I predict that's going to take about what? I reckon five, six hundred grams worth of plastic, and probably somewhere in the region of. 32 hours, that's my prediction. Let's see. Right, let's see if I'm right. 600 grams and 32 hours is my guess. Jesus! 753 grams, 46 hours. That's a long old time. Now have I got 753 grams on my spool of plastic. What have I printed? Just a group. Yeah, should have enough. All right, cool. 46 hours. And is there a way we can get that to print any quicker? Less infill, maybe. But sadly, no, not really. 46 hours. Jesus H Christ, that is a long time. That is putting a lot of eggs in the basket. Right, preheated this to 230 degrees, which is the same setting as I had on the file a second ago. The proton pack one. Right, 
Now these are the magnets I was talking about that I didn't want to get in the way. So hopefully we can print that without any problems. Just gonna watch the first layer go down, the first outline at least, and check back on it in a little while. Let's watch it draw the outline so it's not getting too close to the edge, which is good. I'm more worried about getting close to the magnet to be fair. And where it's such a large print, we usually I'll print something small in the middle, it's easy to level the bed. Where it's such a large print, it's got to be more perfect, less margin for error. Yeah, that's miles away from that magnet, which is cool. Still laying down a nice thick line of plastic, which is good. Seems to be stuck down pretty well. So I'm going to leave that for an hour and then come back. Right, it's about an hour and a half later and it's laying down the raft still and it seems to start pretty well so that's pretty cool because obviously that's the foundation for the rest of the print. If this doesn't go down well then the rest of it is just going to be crap but I'm happy with how that's going. So that's got like the best part of two days left to go. So I'm just going to leave it to it and check on it periodically to make sure that it's doing okay. We're about 12 hours into the print, this is a little over a quarter of the way done. And so far so good, not trying to jinx it or anything because anything can happen. If it messes up the support on the inside there then it won't have anything to print on when it comes to the higher layers. So hopefully it can carry on as it's doing because it's doing really well so far. Ok so we're now 22 hours in and it is looking pretty massive, that's what she said. Um, there's a couple of little tiny splits down there on the bottom right hand corner but that's nothing, a little bit of filler won't be able to fix as long as it doesn't get any more worse than that then we should be okay. The uh, support material in the top there still got its crisscross effect which is good which means it'll be able to put a top layer on that when it comes to it. So yeah, overall it's uh, looking pretty cool so far. We're now 31 hours in and it's looking pretty damn cool. It's massive. Um, I've got one concern, is there going to be enough plastic on there? Hmm, this isn't a whole new roll, it's uh, had a couple of prints out of it, so it's not quite a kilogram, um, but will there be enough to finish the print? If not, then well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We're now up to 40 hours and it is absolutely ginormous, so only a few hours left to go then this first piece will be finished. And it is done. And as it said, it took 46 hours. So let's get that off of there, my little scrapey tool. Just checking on one of my prints, and so oh dear. What in the blue hell is going on with that? There's a big blob coming out at the end of the extruder um, yeah no idea so I'm going to stop that and god knows oh man that's a bit of a crapper hmm Yeah, lovely. No idea what's gone wrong with that, why it's done it, or anything. Um, well, here's that piece that failed spectacularly printing. Um, it's gone all weird up here. It kind of got to this layer here, which is the last bit it did well, and then it went totally crazy. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why, but as you can see, it started extruding out really big, thick pieces. The only way it could do that is if the nozzle grew from being 0.4 mil to what's that about 4 or 5 mil and that is exactly what it did a hole in the end of that should be teeny tiny like that one I couldn't even fit a sewing needle in the end of this one and then this one well, you'll easily fit a bunch of sewing needles it's, it's uh, for some reason grown massive so what I'm going to do 
I'm going to take my knife and trim off all this crap here. Start off by picking some bits off. The bits that are a bit stubborn, I'll take a knife and trim them off, I think. Okay, so that flat piece it printed okay is coming off now, which isn't ideal, but it'll be a good marker when I print that bit again. So now I'm using my knife, and that's going to follow along roughly that layer where it prints it in layers. I'm just splitting the layers of my knife. And hopefully when we get back round to the other side, this knife is in the same layer as where it started. And it is, look at that. Okay, maybe not one layer, one layer out, but that's okay. Cool. This will need to be trimmed down slightly. As that's not connected to the main part there, I'm not too fussed. So that's that done. So what do we do now? Now we've trimmed that off and neatened that up, and it's as if it printed that file and just stopped and didn't complete, uh, create a complete mess. So what we do now is go back into the software. Okay, so this is that piece in the 3D software, and on the model, looking at that now compared to that, it printed. Where did it print? It printed the first flat part, didn't it? So that got. That started printing this bit here, this flat area here, and then I ended up chopping that off. So I chopped off about four mil over here. So all we need to do now is to make another slice. So on the Z plane over here, so we want to keep all of this. So we don't want to see that slice coming through there. We want to keep that. So if I put that there, have a little look. So that's going to drop right down to just above those circle things and I can see looking at my model that I need to come up a tiny bit from those. So I'm now going to slice that on the Z axis like that and that gives us this piece. So I go part, export part, and we'll call that as part 7. We'll call it cut 1 so I know it's just a cut off piece. Optimize that fills holes and things, and then we go into our proton pack file. And there's that. Which way are we going to print it? Well, if I print it this way up, it's going to fill this hole here with support material, and then we've basically got to dig all of this out. So if I flip it over, like that. Now it's only got to do support material for this piece and this piece, and it saves plastic and print a lot quicker. That should not take long at all. Um, this got most of the way up, there's only that little bit left to do, and this took absolutely ages. This was about 40 hours or so, I believe. Um, that's probably only going to take a few hours. 11 hours? That's a long old time, maybe not a few hours. Why is that going to take so bloody long? Of course, now this is a brand new print, it's got to put in a new raft and the bottom and top layers are set to print quite thick so it's got a thick shell and obviously it's got now an extra an extra shell I suppose on this new bottom piece that wouldn't have existed before it would have just started about here so that's why it's going to take a little bit longer but oh well, I'm going to set that to print and be finished by about 1 in the morning which is good before I do that though I've got to put in the new nozzle which is as simple as just taking it and screwing it in I hope there we go, it's actually printing now. It's taken close to an hour to get this going, and why is that? Uh, God knows, um, the plastic wasn't coming out the end of the nozzle. Uh, oh, it's trying to take a bit, bit uh, weird there. Anyway, um, yeah, the uh, the plastic wasn't coming out the end of the nozzle, and I think it's because the hole in the nozzle was too small, even though it's the size it recommends. I think over time, since I've had this, the nozzle has slowly gotten ever so slightly bigger, and I think there might be a sweet spot between you know being brand new and too tight and then being old and worn like the one was when this failed and I think I've just used the file and opened it up ever so slightly and that's what's given me all of my good prints with Groot, my, uh, my sword and all the other bits of the proton pack 
So I'm just hoping it stays like that, you know, long enough to print a load of good stuff. If not, a new nozzle was only £12, so I wouldn't mind buying a new nozzle every, every you know, year, every six months or whatever. That wouldn't be the end of the world. Um, especially as it's uh, printing really well now, which is good. So I'm going to leave this for 12 hours. It's now going to be close to the 2 o'clock in the morning that that will be finished. But at least that gives me more time to build some other stuff. So we'll check back on this in a bit, make sure it's actually staying stuck down. The layers feel like they're staying stuck down. So yeah, I'm happy to leave that to its own devices now. Right, so all my pieces are printed. Time to clean them up. This is the bit that went mad. That's got this extra layer on top here, which needs fixing. First thing to do though, is to trim all the excess material off. All of them printed on beds and at a bit of a weird angle. So we've got a ton of support material on the bottom. So I'm just gonna go at these with knives, pliers and forceps and things and just pull pieces off. I've got my uh, 3D model open on the computer here as well, so I can make sure I'm not pulling off stuff that isn't supposed to be pulled off. And I'm just going to start tearing away at this. Now the support material should come away pretty easily. There we go. And it's actually quite clean underneath, so there should be minimal cleanup to do, sanding and whatnot. Massive piece of support material here. There we go, look at that. It's very, very, very lightweight, that is. It's pretty much hollow. Little bits in here need to get out. A bit of this. Oh, that is So all the pieces now cleaned up, well, cleaned up a bit, and all of this, all the plastic I've trimmed off, I even managed to trim a bit off of my thumb as well. There's tons along the floor, and it's everywhere, so I'm going to clear this away. I'm going to make sure I keep it though, because this will be really good, as it's got a really high surface area on that, will be really good for dissolving in acetone, rather than trying to dissolve a giant chunk. This stuff will dissolve really quickly, so I'm going to chuck that in a box and then put these pieces just roughly together to get an idea of what the whole thing's going to look like. And here are all the 3D printed parts laid out next to each other. They're all printed nice and straight, so they line up really well, which can make sticking it together a lot easier. I've also printed the neutrino ones, which is the gun part of the proton pack. That's in a few pieces too. And uh, I'm not going to stick these together until the next video, as this one's almost 20 minutes now. So make sure you like this video and subscribe to keep an eye out for when I'm going to release that. Thanks for watching, bye bye.